Hey folks, Swip here, and welcome to my 4,901 day old hardcore Minecraft world, where I spent the last 150 days transforming this desert into a beautiful, lush river environment with villager powered crop farms and now extending into the harbor for the future city of New Papyrus. I even spent the time to get a blue axolotl so you don't have to waste the 30 hours of your life to do it. Now, I love world building and creating places full of life. So today, I want to transform this plot of land into a fully functional desert fishing village so leave a like if you're excited and please subscribe stage one of this project involves fixing up the coastline as well this is the edge of the ocean which looks exactly like the edge of the river so i want to transform the coast to fit the oceany vibe and we've got a few axolotls to relocate so i'm thinking we start with saving three of our yellow ones three cyan axolotls three brown axolotls and three purple axolotls now for the rest of them Woo! There's nearly 300 of them in here, and all of them may die. What is the sacrifice I am willing to make to keep myself alive? I can feel the lag in this game already disappearing. Oh, it's so much better. It's like nothing was here. I mean, look at my stats over here. Axolotl isn't even on the list, so clearly I haven't killed any. Technicalities for the win. Hey, look, distraction. Uh, I mean, time to time to build things. Yeah, where I want to start by using some sand out here to create a more gradual slope off the ocean, coming up about two to three blocks off of the water level. To where we got something a little bit more back here that in some places we can raise up to being a third block tall, so it's not just a flat line. That's starting to look pretty good up there, and we'll put a few boulders along the top so it has kind of a natural edge. And then I brought it back so far because in here, here, as the ocean falls off at a very steep angle, I want to just bring this back in so we can make it a bit more gradual. There's the first layer brought back, and that seems a lot more natural. Then underwater, we can make it start dropping off every two or three blocks, I think. That is starting to look much better for the coastline. We'll add in more details soon. But for now, I need to carry this plan all the way down to the peninsula over there. With a little bit of time spent bringing the sand back and flattening out the future building area, we have a beach. Now up here at the highest level of sand, I wanna build out a few boulders. Up here using our mud, a little bit of our jungle plank, and then maybe a little dirt along the back. As if the villagers drug these over here just to make it a little bit more secure as like a wall against any rising tides. They are pretty large, but I'm thinking with the dirt, we can kind of come in here and add in a little bit of our tall grass occasionally. And then we do some of the dead bushes around. And then we can also do mangrove roots back here to make it look like some bramble growing on it with the very occasional birch leaf for something kind of like that. Now I just need to go through the process of building these a few more times down the beach to see if I like it. Before we take a look at everything, I want to try bringing in a few of our smooth stone slabs in here. Well, smooth sandstone slabs so that we can stretch this out and just kind of blur the lines as if it's more of a smooth sand sloping down into the beach. Well, into the water on the beach. Definitely going to need a lot more of these to extend it down underwater, but... An extra element we can also add in is a few of the jungle buttons to make it look like smaller rocks broken off of these bigger guys. And I guess, you know what? We can do a few jungle slabs and planks to be like smaller rocks. I definitely want these to be more in patches instead of like evenly spread out because then it just looks chaotic. But let's get the bed out of the way. And uh, I think it's a good start for the beach. I don't want this to be too crazy. So I think this will work. One more round of rock building and we can finish off this entire edge of the coast where I also added it in a ton of slabs in here as well the back is a little rough right now but we'll tackle that when we're railed in the village if we compare the default coast on the far side to what we built here i'm really happy with it one last addition here i thought of while i was building those things out is we can add in little stone buttons that look like shells that washed up out of the sea hopefully it doesn't look too chaotic adding in this cooler tone to everything yeah 
I think it works. I am newly out of smooth sandstone, so let's grab the shulker box here of sandstone and the remaining axolotls to fly back to the old world. Down into the dwarven villager trading game. So close. So close. How have I never noticed this is a slime chunk? I have AFK'd in that room so many times waiting for things to smelt down i gotta be more careful taking the sandstone and not the axolotls we can throw them all in here to cook down into smooth sandstone now i did think about adding the axolotls here into this pond but i really love the glow squid in there and the axolotls would eat them so i need a new place to add them if you have any ideas let me know but for now they're gonna hang out back here where the original axolotls were i won't forget about them this time i hope a few moments later and sandstone's all cooked down but before we head back to new papyrus let's grab a little bit of stone ah there's the shulker as it's an easy block to use to put some rough shapes in and i don't plan on building with it as my goal today is to build the desert fishing village i like to go in with a rough plan last episode i built the fishing dock so beyond that i want the village to include several buildings and a market in the center for the villagers to hang out i'm planning on including multiple homes for fishermen some dock workers a few farmers sail makers and a cartographer alongside a small shipyard a little further up the river thankfully the desert is pretty naturally flat so we don't need to terraform too much now i can grab the stone and translate the drawing into actual blocks here in game to better see the scale of this village building project this here should be big enough for a storage room a lot of the positions are already changing for my rough plan but that's the point of the first draft just to get the ideas down and get the brain working cleaning things up a little bit further here and building out the shapes in minecraft and i think we have a pretty good result coming in here already We'll pick out what building is what as we're building them. But for now, the full lines of the shapes marking out the different buildings themselves, then these dotted lines are going to be little backyards or gardens because I realized I never really do that. So these villagers are going to have nice little gardens. I just thought it'd be fun to include. Then here in the middle, we'll have the market with a fountain in the center and kind of stalls surrounding it. But now for a very important step, I got a plate to feel. Kudos to Ale City for the suggestion and a little bit of information behind why. So while we plant a melon field today, I wanted to mention a new idea. I've always wanted to do the comment of the day aspect on this series, but it feels a little out of place on present day YouTube. So instead, I'm going to be uploading a second video with each main episode here to my second channel, FWIP2, right after each episode releases, responding to a few comments. So subscribe to FWIP and subscribe to FWIP2 too. Link in the description. Got some nice melons over here and I've extended it all the way down to link up our terraforming to everything else that we've done. And I just realized, finally my subscribe animation with the blue axolotl works. We got one of those guys right in here. Where's Booger? Ah, hi, Booger. With the field wrapped up, I want to get this shulker monster out of the hot desert sun. So let's build a storage room here right above the docks, which means I trip back into the old world to chop down a load of spruce wood, as I always do. Then back over to the desert again, I started crafting down a bunch of different materials we can use for the storage room and creating this new desert village vibe. I am a little bit short on terracotta, so flying into the back of the mesa, we can fix that and finally gather a few stacks instead of just what I need. Then a quick trip into the nether, I need to repair my light room. A few shulker boxes here and we are ready to go. Where I want to start by replacing part of the base of this using some of our jungle planks. Then here along this back corner, I want to tear out the stone and bring in some of our spruce planks as a, another building off of the back corner. Now here along the front, I want to bring this out another block and we can go with our five and stretch all the way over to here. Stripping these down, of course, and building out a few archways. Then on top for a little bit of a roof, we can add in some of our acacia slabs. The original plan had another big archway in here, but I think it can serve better as something a wee bit smaller, which is a three wide doorway that we can surround with our spruce. Campfires up above. And for a fun little pop in here, we can add in some of our cherry wood. From here, I brought the sandstone wall all the way around the back of the building to add in our chiseled bookshelves up here on top as a little bit of a trim with some strip birch logs on top of these. Now around the outside here, we can bring in a few of our spruce buttons just as the kind of the deserty vibe that I feel like everybody does. And for a fun little idea in here, I'm thinking we can take some of our hanging signs using our crimson and the cherry and add in something like that. Yeah, I like it. Speaking of cherry wood, on top of the birch, we can add this. Next, we're adding some of our spruce slabs. We can work on the roof here by extending our spruce log going all the way across, stripping down all of the logs, and then adding the slabs in between to complete the second floor. From here, we can tear out the sandy floor or this. 
Okay, no, fine, fine. Uh, I'll, I'll fix it. Don't leave. See, see, so much better. Moving on to the two-story building, I want this to be a little darker, so I'm using mainly stripped jungle logs, jungle planks, and a tiny bit of terracotta to create artificial shadows at the top. Adding a simple roof on top, then I got to work detailing the balcony with some greenery and added a small palm tree to the side. For now, I can finally get to work on cleaning up all of these shulker boxes and organize them a bit better here inside the storage building. Now to speed things up here, I decided to go heads down for a while as I realized this village is pretty large. So I designed three row houses that we crammed here right next to each other on the docks with some height variety to make the builds feel more unique, but still blend into the village. I also added in this white canvas overhanging the road here, but we'll add in the road a little later down the road. Yeah. But I love these new homes as we have room for five villagers with a house up here, one on the bottom floor, two inside of this building, and then a fifth one right down here sunken in a little bit that can be kind of a cool workshop. We also have a small backyard for all of these houses kind of connected in here that I want to turn into a cool garden, but that's all going to come later as I first want to focus up on building up even more of these homes. And I'm thinking over in this space to kind of mark it out. I want to bring in some scaffolding here and we can turn into a little bit of like a fisherman workstation where they could and clean the catch that they bring in every day as it is a fishing village after all and we don't really have that so that 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 symbolizes it i'll definitely remember after i build the houses tackling the back home first i want to go in with a brown palette starting with the plain packed mud walls to keep it simple and just get the shape in place with a pop of white glazed terracotta on top the backyard for this one though i want to close it in with a lower wall turning into a covered terrace using some jungle planks and stripped logs going for the lush vibe i did add in a few acacia leaves and then some campfires to link it all together now the mud was a tad too dark for me so i swapped out a lot of that for our brown mushroom block and also use bamboo trap doors and doors as the windows and well the door next i proceeded to craft a ton of note blocks and not use them as instead i want to try using strip bamboo for a base then some sandstone and then working in bamboo for another one story tall house that is slightly shorter than the mud brick one that we just built with the chaos down below bringing in a ton of new elements i added in a spruce slab roof to bring it together with the other builds before jumping out for a quick trip to chop down a ton more acacia trees and running into the back of the mesa yet again to pick up some red terracotta we can use for building as the final building going in here i want to break up the skyline so this is going to be a two-story tall building with the spruce base trim then working in some jungle planks and strip logs the rest of the way up the building for a balcony and a second floor room now i can't detail without campfires so i made a quick trip back home where i swear i flew into the cave village with absolutely no issues whatsoever you had to be in this stream to see it i swear it happened but i definitely don't need to expand the entrance at any point now because i'm a professional now these three new houses are all finished up and ready to go for the base shapes but desert build styles tend to be rather flat so i did jump around a bit to add in some extra different parts to it with some extra shape for the buildings just detailing everything to link them all a little bit together feeling more like a village instead of three random houses put next to each other leading into replacing the sand with an actual road to darken things away from the bright desert i worked in some oak planks as well as strip logs with little bits of dirt and then finally using dirt inside of the fish market with rooted dirt in there to help texture it now before we get into building up the fish fish market which I want to do here very soon I need some more detail blocks so let's take the shulker of string back with us and run back home to the old world grab one of the empty shulker boxes down here as I want to load up on detail blocks mainly a ton of different types of candles the iron farm should have plenty of red dye perfect should have some orange tulips in here somewhere yes or orange candles pink candles light gray candles why not green candles yellow let's go blue and restock on light blue with a bunch of new items on hand i transformed the market from this scaffolding layout into this beautiful little market with palm trees providing some shade i'm really happy to say that this corner down here is completely finished up we got a little outdoor cooking oven right in there the streets are detailed and the vibe down here is just so fun to be able to walk through i even brought in a bunch of the wandering trader micro blocks just to add that extra little bit of detail and most importantly see people in a pot i had to share i i i had to share it Taking a look at where we started today, this has already turned into a really cool little village. But we need to continue on as there are still a lot of buildings we need to finish up. Let's get started off here with the well in the middle of the main market. The inspiration for this one actually comes from Diablo 4. There's a watering hole in one of the cities that you can walk through that I just thought was really cool and I think that can fit pretty well out here. 
since people are going to be walking through this all the time i thought we could add a little bit of greener in here with our azalea leaves almost as if it's like algae growing on top and then we can add in a tiny bit of seagrass and remove a ton of these i'm always trying to add more greenery into this place so we're going to do some torch flowers and just some ferns hanging out here in flower pots along the edge for something a little like this now for the road i want to stick with sandstone but you can see here the top is just really bland and flat i want the kind of cobblestony side texture which we can actually get for ourselves by flipping sandstone stairs upside down a quick run around the market adding all of this in it's starting to really fit the environment a lot more now for my favorite part i can waterlog the stairs meaning i can add some sugar cane in here right around the fountain well 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 this will be a heavily traveled area, so I don't want to add in too much, but I think a few fit really well. On to the next building. I need to throw together a bunch of materials again. Trying to build a two-story tall mud brick building with a bunch of texturing so it doesn't feel the same as the well or the other mud brick houses we've made so far. And most importantly, I need this bell. Starting with the base now, as expected, I'm going to be removing all of the stone to replace it with acacia planks. This is meant to be a restaurant of sorts. I want it to be very, very open air as we're working our way around. We'll have a butcher villager in here as the restaurant chef, and then we can here on the front add in these open arches with our acacia to create a bit of an indoor outdoor feel this is pretty good for the first floor here and i want an outdoor seating area here that also needs to be covered from the sun and i think we can use a bit of an outdoor trellis design with some of these incorporating the fences and leaves together into the build now these aren't the most connected so we can go ahead and wrap this all with some spruce signs which works pretty well a little glazed terracotta on the floor then we can strip all these logs down to create a nice little seating section and the bell can go right there then i'm thinking we do table 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 and chairs to go around i'm throwing the bell on this instead of into the well so that the villagers actually gather in that area didn't i just think it'll be cool now it's officially a village we have a bell and a chimney on top but of course we need a front gate well of sorts kind of more like a big fancy entrance leading into the village from the desert outside for travelers to use when they're coming by land so i'm adding in two new homes here on either side of the street to help enclose the space just finished adding in a few more palm trees and this is really turning into something so so special ah i'm, I'm just so happy with how this project's turning out oh missed a block of dirt especially looking at the front entrance with a few more details added onto it oh this it's looking so good but i think it's about time that we transition out of the village for a little while we have two buildings left to make in here one out this way and well uh we really need a road i just went to refill on food and well my pork chop box has turned into a random foliage box and i'm almost out of pork chop it probably has been like four months since I last had to fill up this shulker box. So time for a quick session hanging here above the Hogland farm, which should be enough to keep me going for another few months on food. Man, I really want to be expanding the nether hub soon. What do you think I should do with it? But regardless, we should now have... Oh my god, hi pigs. They're so loud. We should now have a ton of pork for the pork economy. Wait wrong series let's just load this up and back to work on the village to clear up a little bit of inventory space i'm gonna drop off two shulker boxes of sand that i just have sitting around back here in storage where it's time to fill back up on new blocks to build a road so i swapped the brown mushroom farm out for red mushrooms to use for that hidden texture and a little bit of bone meal magic should grow everything up then i can just jump on in and remove all of these with our silk touch axe to collect up all of the blocks really quickly the other item i need to restock on for the road is birch logs which thankfully i have a giant birch forest biome that i don't really mind thinning out a bit for a future project as i love the location now i've done a lot of block breaking and traveling today so i did jump into the end quickly to repair all of my gear which leads to more block breaking back in the desert as i need to clean up the terrain and clear out the space for this new road to go through so slowly working back towards the main road i followed the terrain as much as i could to keep this pretty natural so i didn't have to do too much terraforming then comes the road extending all the way back to the village now building energy is still a flowing so i decided to jump right into building up the little farmhouse out in front of the village entrance with a small attached camel stables to hopefully hold two camels down the road then working through a few different ideas and this simple house is coming together now we do need some camels in the house for the stables so a trip back to the camel death sanctuary we can create some new life safely escaping the extremely sharp cactus we need to move the baby camel all the way back across the desert to its new box but it will grow up here 
here as I don't want it to suffocate in a wall when it's growing up as uh, I can't lose another camel. But with a little bit more cactus, we can get a second one. I don't know what these bunnies are planning, but it looks pretty sinister from here. Time to go get that second camel. I left. No, the baby camel has a lead. I don't have a lead. Where do I get one? Here, little guy, come over here, please. Come on, let's go. No, no, not the adults, not the adults. You, you, you stand there. Okay, but I do kind of like the camels in here in the actual village. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Moving on to another major element I want to include here, the shipyard. I'm thinking we can include a big open air. We'll go five wide. Storage building right back over here here that can have a little diagonal section to it which will stack up soon but that should be a good shape then we bring up the moss and dirt to establish the riverbank I left some dirt in the middle here for like a bit of a boat launch and then we can bring in some oak slabs to shape out spaces where two of our river boats can be being built then if we take some of our blocks of bamboo along here we can make it look like they're working with fresh material This should do for the first one here, and then we can kind of strip some of the sections down as if they're still kind of carving the shape out of the boat. And then I do want to build a second one right next door. And something like that should work for the second one. Very basic. Now I just need to finish building off this covered area and we can get into decorating. For the little diagonal section so that this isn't so flat on the top, we're going to bring it down a block. And I guess that means this comes back up. We'll do the lower and then just slab our way up to the top here. Then for the big one, we can come up with a few more supports to make it a little bit more official looking and run the slabs going all the way across and of course we gotta strip down all of these logs as they are way too dark currently this here should do for the base now we just need to decorate this place out to fix this area up i started with changing out the sand for dirt to signify the work zone then building up a small retaining wall going around to keep all of the rabbits out lastly for the main details i added in the riverbank foliage with a few more of our palm trees then throwing in a few little extra details around here this is gonna do for the really simple shipyard i don't plan to be walking in it too much so so from out here, I feel like it works for a shipyard and that's enough for me. <gasps> the camels grew. Oh, I love you. I'll do the ear thing. Do it. Do it. Yay. Before we get to moving villagers around, we have two homes that need to be finished up in the village. This small diagonal structure with a bunny. No, 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 no longer with a bunny. And the larger one over here will be the sailmaker's workshop. Let's get started on the smaller one here as I think we can throw something together pretty quickly. Full diagonals are pretty difficult to detail, but we can add that in. And then up here, we can just have a few of our hanging signs going in. And that's probably enough. Now I just need to throw the back on. With that in, I can now just fill out the roof with some of our spruce slabs. There we go. Another house very ready for villagers. Ah, so ready for villagers. Now for the final building, I need to throw together some more materials. It just feels right to make the last building out of sandstone. So we're going to be largely using that. Since it's on the coastal side of the village, I want to include bone blocks as like a weathered sandstone from the salty sea spray. And outside of that, we just need a bunch of different detail materials. Nearly everything I need is inside these two boxes right here, but I also want to include a load of banners as like a hanging cloth. Let's grab some light blue. We'll use a little of our cyan, yellow for sure, and white. And I don't have blue. Oh no. Oh, we're going to need a lot more wool. I also need a few other things, so that's going to be a quick trip back home. Let's start by grabbing three stacks of honeycomb and six stacks of logs to create one stack of beehives. Some blue wool, a little bit more light blue, and we can make a ton more banners. Banners. Last step, I need to grab some more campfires, which means visiting the fishermen for, I think, the fourth time today. That's everything here together, so it's time to assemble the sailmaker's workshop, trying to really showcase this as a workplace with all of the different details being added in. I added in a few more details afterwards, and with the roadway over here, this is looking so good to walk through, as all of the buildings in the village are now complete. Taking a look at where we started today, this village has turned into something really special, with space for more than than 20 villagers inside of these new homes and i don't really know what else to say so have another cool cinematic shot except that we still have a lot more work to do before i can call
call this complete. And I only have six days left before day 5,000, so we better get moving. I want to add some very simple interiors to turn this into a working village, but first we need villagers to start growing the population. So to get started here, let's craft down two bamboo rafts and see if we can't rehome two villagers from the clifftop. Come on, Mr. Farmer, get on the raft. Yes, and your friend. Yes, no, no, it's sitting on the raft, not on the raft. Huh? Huh? I'm gonna have to remove the workstations and beds here that we can just repurpose inside the new village. One quick stop back at the little farming outpost. I haven't checked these at all, but how are the auto farms doing? Carrots, uh, pretty good. And potatoes, ooh, really good. Let's just stock up on these. Now time to bring these guys over to the village. Thankfully, this isn't too long of a journey. I just hope that they don't try and go back to the old village. Second villager is now here. And we can start taking the beds that I just picked up and drop off a few of them inside the different houses. Oh, the bunny. No, the bunny got out of the house. Wait, no, follow the carrot. Yes, yes, you, li you live in this house. I'm going to follow my friend Lizzie's idea when she was designing houses back on Empire's SMP where they're going to have a bed, a workstation, and a crafting table. Then we've already got the torch here for the light, but maybe that goes on the wall. I want to add in a few composters here for some farmers. We've got plenty of barrels scattered around on the boat, so we'll get a ton of fishermen. And night times here. Can I get you out of your boat and you out of your boat? Now, do you know how to get out of the water here? No. Yes? No. And you use the loom. Come on, not this way, please. Stay in this village. Yes. Now go find a bed. No, 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 please. Yes. Look. Wow. No. Ooh, where are you going? Oh, I'm gonna regret working these villagers. Oh, wait, he's going for the bed. Do that one. Do that. No. Wait, please. It's really dark and spooky, scary out here now. You probably want to go find a bed. Maybe, maybe we can throw a bed like um here, here, here. There's a bed. There's a bed. There's a bed up there. Buddy, buddy, no, no, buddy. We're going, we're going back in the raft. He's going all the way back to the old village. One of them got the right idea. Please, just no, stop, no. We'll deal with him in the morning, sir. Sir, what are you doing? Sir, you're floating. Uh, no, please, please. I'm trying to populate this village. Don't die already. Okay, you want, you want a loom? You want, yeah, come on. You want the loom? I'll put it right there for you. Don't do it. Don't jump. Walk down the stairs. Oh my gosh. Why do I try and work with villagers? I need to go make some more beds, but I'm thinking we can add in a few cauldrons or leather workers because they kind of look like dock workers with the aprons and everything. Maybe we can throw one up here above the storage room as well. This could be turned into like a small workstation of sorts so we can have an armor smith and a farmer over in here. Oh, you're trying to be a farmer off of the boat here. Oh, you weren't trying to run away. Okay, come this way. No, come this. Don't, no, don't, 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 don't. Uh -huh. Trap doors. Maybe I flip that up so they don't fall in. Come get the carrots. Yeah. I should now have at least a bed in every single one of the homes. So we should be able to breed the villagers if I can get them to each other. Well, he's lost his job. So he must really be stuck up there. All right, buddy. How'd you manage this? Come on down. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Why are you on those trap doors now? Oh. It's so sad. Right. I'm just going to grab a third villager from the village over here. I was going to use these for the city, but this guy doesn't have a job. So that means he can come over with me. Yes. Oh, no. The first villager's gone. Where do you go? You stay here. Okay. We've got one butcher villager right over there. And there was a second around here. Where did he go? Where'd the first one go? What? Ah, oh, there he is. Okay. No, no, no. Don't go to the beach. No, you, you have to have your carrots before you go to the beach. Eat your vegetables. No, take that. Oh, there they are. Okay, perfect. Have all of the carrots ever. There's so many beds here, so we should definitely get a baby. It's not going to be weird if I watch, right? You guys just... Yeah, here, we'll just... Yep, Discovery Channel. Let's go. No, that's a that's a window. That's a, that Buddy, that's, that's a window. I'm not going to regret bringing villagers here, am I? No, 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 no. Def, definitely not. Okay, so I did give you like 10 stacks of carrots. Can we, can we do something? Fine, fine, fine. I'll leave you be. I'll leave you be. We'll just leave them in there and go do other things. Okay, maybe they prefer potatoes. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's go with a bunch of potatoes here. Potatoes and beds. That's all you. It's all you need. We've got some candles out here. Ambiance. Come on. We got the full ambiance. Your inventories are full. You actually can't pick up any more of the potatoes because your inventories are full. Do something. I hate villagers. I love them, but I hate villagers, but I love them. Okay, every single house now has beds and a workstation for every single bed inside of there and light sources to keep them safe at night. Do we have any babies? Still, still no baby villagers. No, no, we're just not, a, not in the mood. Okay, fine. You don't have a light in here. Have some stupid lights. Oh, there's a third villager here? Where'd you come from? Oh, you're in the composter. Oh, it's... Ugh. 
villagers still no baby villagers but we've moved on top of the trellis so maybe there's hope and now we're nope now we've fallen off the trellis but we're exploring the village wow look at this whole village i built for you guys that you can help me populate please no 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 we're running back to the safety no oh we're hanging by the bell i swear somehow this isn't registering at a village i don't know how this game works i ended up just breeding villagers over at the far village and brought over four more of them so there we have it the village is now full of villagers kind of kind of kind of i'll keep working on increasing the population here quick reminder if you want to see the comment of the day where i'm responding to these two comments and some more behind the scenes work check out my second channel flip 2. be sure to leave a like on this episode to support my channel please subscribe and i'll catch you all on the flip side as this sun setting here ushers in day 5000 of this hardcore minecraft world any second now we're gonna get a big old 5000 right there oh <laughs> okay bye